So now that we talked about dominance and recessive alleles, we're going to talk about how we can track these alleles through different generations, through what we're going to call family genetics. So we're just using a really hypothetical example that is really very simplified. In reality, it's a lot more complicated than this. But for the purposes of our example, let's just say that brown hair is always dominant to red hair and red hair is always dominant to blonde hair and that these are coded through just one allele in our DNA. And so in this example, we're going to say that there is two parents and one parent has red hair and he is carrying a genotype that has one allele for red hair and one allele for blonde hair. The other parent has a phenotype for brown hair and she's carrying one allele for brown hair and one allele for blonde hair. Notice that although she's carrying one allele for blonde hair, it doesn't manifest in her phenotype. And same as the other parent, although he's carrying one allele for blonde hair, it also isn't manifesting in his phenotype due to dominance. Now, every time they go to reproduce, hypothetically, 50% of one parent's sperm will contain the allele for red hair, and 50% of the sperm will contain the allele for blonde hair. In the other parent, 50% of her eggs will contain the allele for brown, and 50% of her eggs will contain the allele for blonde hair. So there's different combinations they can make. 25% of the time, their offspring may receive the red allele from parent one and the brown allele from parent two, and therefore may have a genotype of brown red. Now, because brown's always dominant to red, the phenotype of this offspring is likely to be brown hair. Another opportunity could be an offspring that receives the allele for blonde and the allele for brown and has the genotype brown blonde and the phenotype because of dominance is likely to be brown hair. Then we have a third possibility where the offspring receives an allele for red and an allele for blonde. Because red is dominant to blonde, their phenotype is going to be red hair. And 25% of the time, they will also get an offspring that receives two alleles for blonde hair, therefore having the genotype blonde blonde, and the phenotype is likely to be blonde hair. This is how, even though neither parent has blonde hair in their phenotype, they may have a child who has blonde hair. And so, really interestingly, it looks like there's only three possibilities in phenotype that the offsprings will have brown, red, or blonde hair, but there's actually four possibilities in genotype. Notice that each one of the genetic combinations is different for each of these four possible outcomes. So although there's four possible genotype outcomes, there's only three possible phenotype outcomes in this example. So we can use a Punnett square to quickly assess what are the probabilities of offsprings in one generation inheriting, carrying, or manifesting a trait. It's important for us to distinguish now what's the difference between carrying versus manifesting. Both of the parents were carrying an allele for blonde hair but it didn't manifest in either of the parents. In one parent, brown hair was manifesting, and in the other parent, red hair was manifesting. Yet, they both carried the blonde allele, and because when one of their offsprings received two blonde alleles, finally that hair color would manifest. So carrying is the idea it's in our genotype, but not expressing in our phenotype. And this may allow things like hair color to skip generations. Now that we've talked about the basics, we have to talk about how to follow these Punnett squares when we're looking specifically at sex-linked traits. So by sex-linked trait, what we're talking about is alleles that are carried on either the Y or the X chromosome. We know that typically females tend to have two X chromosomes and typically males tend to have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And so if an allele is on the Y chromosome, it's only going to impact males in the family. And so this may be something that is only running through the men in a family. However, there tends to be less research on the Y chromosome because it is actually smaller and contains less information than the X chromosome. There's more research on the X chromosome because it's bigger, it has more alleles, and everybody has an X chromosome. We're not aware of anybody who's ever been born without a single X chromosome. So everybody always has one. And trying to track how these traits may be passed down on X chromosomes can get very complicated. There's two different ways they can get passed down, and there we have to consider if it is an X-linked dominant trait, meaning you only need to have one affected X to manifest the trait, or if it is an X-linked recessive trait, meaning you have to have all of your X's have that trait, or you'll end up being a carrier. We're gonna start off with the more straightforward version when we're talking about X-linked dominant sex-linked traits. So an X-linked dominant trait, there's lots of examples out there, but just two would be a vitamin absorption disorder as well as Rett syndrome, which we'll talk about in a little while. And so these are X-linked dominant traits. You only need one for it to manifest. 
And so what happens here is if a father has one X that's impacted by this dominant trait, let's say vitamin absorption issues, it doesn't matter that it's dominant, it's going to manifest and influence this phenotype no matter what. And so be having this blue X, this is the impacted X that has the trait, he passes this X down to 100% of his daughters, but to 0% of her sons. The reason why 0% of his sons get the impacted X is because all of his sons received his Y chromosome instead, and his daughters received the X chromosome. And so the sons get the Y, they do not receive the trait from the father but 100% of the daughters would receive the trait. Now, although the daughters have two X chromosomes, this is a dominant trait, so it's going to dominate over whatever the other X uh, true characteristic is, and they are both going to manifest the trait. So 100% of daughters, 0% of sons will manifest the trait when the father has an X-linked dominant trait. Now, what happens if the mom has that trait? Well, moms tend to have two X chromosomes, and it doesn't matter that there's two, however, as this is a dominant trait, it's going to manifest in her phenotype. Now, 50% of her offspring will receive the X chromosome that's not affected, and 50% of her offspring will receive the X chromosome that is impacted. It doesn't matter that the daughter has two Xs and the son only has one, both of the children that receive the impacted X will receive and manifest the trait. And so we can see here that if it was only the red X that has the uh, vitamin absorption disorder on it, 50% of the offspring would receive it and 50% would not. Now, hypothetically, let's say both the parents have this condition. It's possible for them to have an offspring that does not. For example, this one son in the upper right hand corner does not receive either impacted X from either parent. And so what's going on here is he would not have the trait at all, even though it's dominant. Now let's move on to what happens if we have an X-linked recessive trait. This can be more complicated, but there's many more possible X-linked recessive traits that we may know. We know that early baldness is an X-linked recessive trait. We know that a blood disorder known as hemophilia is an X-linked recessive trait, as well as many types of color blindness. So again, let's say we have a dad who has one X that is impacted with this X-linked recessive trait. Let's say it's color blindness. And so because he only has one X, it is recessive, but because he only has one X, he's going to manifest color blindness. That will be in his phenotype. Now for 100% of his sons, he passes along the Y, so he doesn't pass that trait on to any of his sons. For both of his daughters, he passes along the trait. However, both of his daughters have two X chromosomes. This means because this is an X-linked recessive trait and not dominant trait, the daughters do not necessarily get color blindness manifested in their phenotype. Rather, they become carriers of this trait. And that's because if they only have one X that codes for color blindness and not two, they'll just be carriers because it is recessive. Now let's think about the mom. It's possible for women to be carriers for many X-linked recessive traits and not even know about it. And that's because they have two X chromosomes. So because it's recessive, let's say it's this red X here, it doesn't manifest in their phenotype, they're unaware of it, because whatever is on the other X is what's impacting their phenotype. Now for 50% of the mom's offspring, she passes along the black unaffected X chromosome, they don't get affected. But for the other 50%, she does pass it along. This means that for 50% of her sons, uh, they will receive the affected X. And because the sons only have one X chromosome, 50% of her sons will actually manifest the trait. This means that if a mom is carrying an X-linked recessive trait for colorblindness, 50% of her sons are likely to be colorblind and 50% are not. In addition, she's going to pass along this trait to only 50% of her daughters. So half her daughters will be unaffected, but the other half will go on to become carriers. Remember, unless both X's in the daughters are impacted, they will not manifest these traits. Now let's say both the blue and the red X's are both coding for the same X-linked recessive trait. They're both coding for colorblindness. Can we get females who express these traits? Yes, we can. We can see here if the father passes along the blue X and the mother passes along the red X, they're going to have one daughter who does manifest, is not just a carrier anymore, but will manifest it. However, they will only manifest the X-linked recessive trait if they have two alleles. This is more rare. We tend to see more girls and daughters become carriers of X-linked recessive traits and for boys to more likely manifest them. This is why things like baldness, hemophilia, and colorblindness tend to be more common in males than in females.